came in our city. So my father was afraid. He decided to take us on the first flight back to Oman. And it was really Gulf Air flight. In Oman, I was surprised to see another life that I wasn't know all about. I came to see a poor city, no sign of civilization inside it. People coming from dawn to sunset to do one thing, just looking for their meal. They went to the sea, they went to their farms, the farthers out, somebody are in Kuwait, others in Saudi Arabia. So they are all speeding on all over the Arab countries just to feed their families. All the persons in our city, Sur, especially, and this is especially perfect pictures from Sur, were like one family. They are close to each other. They know each other. They celebrate with each other. They feel misery with each other, feel grief with each other. Everything they were doing, doing, doing with each other. And this, you know, big relationship makes me feel not a good way, in a bad way, because, you know, if they believe in things, we should also believe in it. So if we accept it or not accept it, it is not a question. We should believe what they believe. In that, I saw a lot of scenes in that life. And I know this new life will be a challenge for me. So the first thing I see, the girls on my age was wearing a big colored you know, head scarf called lesu. And it is totally their mothers. I assure you it is their mothers. Because in, there is no way that this child will wear a long lesu to the ground and tuck the sand with it. <laughs> All of the girls were at that time just having one mission. Taking care of their brothers and sisters, taking care of the house. While the mothers are out there working for the house. They went out to bring water for the houses. Sometimes they to bring wood on their head so they can fire up the wood for meals. So there is no any sign of civilization in my city. And I was shocked, a little bit shocked because there was an oven and microwave in Kuwait, TV. When I came to this city, I, there is no lights on the house. We stayed on the lamps on the night. There is nothing. So I now I the thought in my mind, this will be a life changing to me, actually. When I was 15, I, threw, I go through the challenges itself. The district, the conservative family, the conservative community, the you know, very hard society, the rules, the abandoned thing for women to do, all this I have struggled with and I tried to adapt with. One of the most things that I tried to adapt with is how the people treat their girls. When I was at school, I came to the first uh, school in sixth uh, grade. My first school in Oman was sixth grade. So when I went to the sixth grade, I saw the class with 36 girls. So I said, okay, 36 girls out of the community is a very good number. The second year, there were 29 girls. Where are the nine girls gone? They said they got married. Oh my God, there are children. How come they are gone married? They said, this is the decision in all over Oman. The girl will not allow to continue their studies. Their main job in the world is to be a mother and a wife. So it's, uh, this is another shock to my life. Okay, the woman is not just taking care of her brother and sister. She is taking a role in another man's life without her acceptance. So I took another way to that path, they are, or the, you know, you will be amazed how much the girl was accepting their life. They're accepting this decision. They're accepting to be mothers easily. Why? Because they, don't have, they do not have another thing to think of. Most of them do not have a good degree on school. Why we bother? When we have time to study, they come from school, wash their brothers and sisters clothes, they feed their families, they go to the bed, tired, the next day they go up and work for the house, afternoon they go to school. Uh, by the way, we are school, our school was at our afternoon schools. 
because on the morning it was boys' school. So the same school, morning for the boys, afternoon for girls. And it was very good for the family because the girl will be making breakfast, baking lunch, washing the clothes, washing the everything, and she goes to the school. Okay, the mother will be happy with that. She will can arrange time with her children until her daughter comes. I was not accepting that. I refused to accept this future. I refused to be one of that girls, ordinary girls, who is accepting her way in life. So I took a decision to continue my life with self-motivation. I will not see what the community wants for me. I will build myself by my own. So I started to motivate myself. I will do it. I will learn. I will study. I will not look at others. I don't care what they want in their life. I want something else in my life, and I will achieve it. So I studied hard until I finished my second grade with a grade 93% on my certificate grade. Clubs. <laughs> but we have decided. In 1990, the decision came to me because it was 36 girls, then it was 29 girls, after that it became 16 girls. So I, I saw that it is very close to me. <laughs> Be aware. <laughs> <laughs> it is coming closer to you time after time. And the day comes. My father decided to get me married. And who he will get me married to? A 36 percent. He was his cousin. And he is graduated from Sultan, not Sultan, I was Jordan University. And came to Oman, one of the biggest family members. And they are all proud of him. He is the first graduate from high school in our tribe. And he will be proud to give his daughter to him. This is like a gift on this. Season. So, yes, please come. I will give you my daughter. He said, OK, uncle, I am not refusing your daughter, but I have a master's degree to finish. Because in my job, they asked me to do a master's degree to be, you know, um, increase my job and to be more in my job like a manager like that. He told him, OK, you go out. I will reserve this girl for you. Don't worry. No one will take her. OK. At that time, I was confused. What should I do? When my father told me that I engaged you to my cousin, I cannot say, no, I don't want. At that time, we cannot say anything loud to our parents. We cannot speak back to our parents. We were learned to be obeyed only and respecting. That's the only thing that we are paid. But I took a decision in my, inside myself. I will turn my life over. Thank you. Thank you. What should I do? I will continue, continue educating myself. While the husband or the future husband is out there, I will continue educating myself. I will continue processing education through schools. I told my father, OK, I do not disagree, disagree with you. Just give me the opportunity to finish my high school. He's out there. He's doing his work. Just let me do finish my work. And all the you know, society, my principal at school came to the house. My uncle came to my house, told him, just make her finish these three years. It will not be anything hard to do. It will go with daughter, girls and comes with girls. My father accepted. I continue my education until I reach 90% in third secondary high school. I waited for the future husband to come. He didn't come back. Good luck. <laughs> Fire away. The second attempt came again. My father said that there is a girl in my house. What should I do with her? All the girls are married, and she's stuck in my house. And we have an old speech in our uh, language. A snake, to raise a snake in the house is better to raise a girl in the house. And this is very bad speech. That was a very awful thing to say. And he was speaking it out. But I do not blame my father. I respect my father, and they fully appreciated what I am here because of his knowledge. 
but the society sometimes controls your thinking, controls your ideas, controls your aspects. So that was his decision. I cannot put a girl on the house. So he made a council meeting with his cousins, with his friends, with his brothers. Find me a husband for that daughter, please. <laughs> then one of my family decided, okay, we have a husband. We decide, well, who's the husband? Your cousin, mother's-in-law, cousin, he is a divorced person from 15 years. And he has six boys. And he want, needed somebody to watch them. Because he's in Muscat and the boys are at the house. And their grandmother is an old woman. So she can take care of the mother and the boys. Oh, good housemate. Perfect housemate. My father didn't blink. He called that person on the, the, the same day. Please, Hamis, come to Sur. That this Thursday, I want you on something. Also, the person wasn't having the decision to engage to me. He came, listen to me. I gave you my girl. Please accept it. You, she can take care of you, take care of your mother, take care of your six boys. Take her. It is a gift. <laughs> so what should he refuse a gift? No, he didn't refuse it. He said, OK, uncle, I will take her. But please put her with your house for one year because I have a scholarship in USA. After this one year, I will come and take her and will make married. My father decided, no, first you should lie a paper that you married her. So I will not be responsible. And everybody will come, will ask, she's married to brother. Ah, oh, she's a married woman. She's a married woman in my house. So it's like, you know, uh, taking a lot of heart to work from him, put it on another back, another person back. So the husband accepted, they written the certificate of marriage, and the husband went away. I waited for the house for a whole year, 1993. I told my father, I finished my high school, and in this summer, you arranged the husband for me. Please, let me finish my higher education while the husband is outside. I tried, you know, to like make the, through education just not so straightly. So my father said, no, no, you are not belong, belonging to me anymore. You are belonging to somebody else. And this is his decision. And I could not contact him in the USA. At that time, there is nothing to contact anybody in the USA. So I stayed at home for the whole 1993, waiting, working with my mother in morning and afternoon, sleeping at night until the end of the year 1993. I received my divorce paper from his brother because he cannot come to Oman and every husband that engaged to me is flight away, cannot back come to Oman, I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe something in my mind, you know, a spell, a spell, a spell, <laughs> overnight. <laughs> so, I think you, you see this picture. You know, I finally got married. <laughs> and the third attempt is a sustainable th attempt. So my third husband is my now, for the this day's husband. We are now comple uh, completing 25 years together. <laughs> Thank you. My first boy was born when I was 20 years old. He is now 24 years old. He is graduating from Sultan Qaboos University Law School. In 1989, something amazing happened. After I got my 1998, you corrected for the second time for me now. Thank you very much. You are following the track. <laughs> so 1998, uh, I was a mother and a housewife all the time long. And the four world around me. I didn't do anything. I, didn't, I wasn't allowed to do anything. My husband wants me a mother for his children and a wife for him only. And my family and all the community accepting this rule. But I didn't accept it. One day, my sister came from Sultan Qaboos University, and she was very happy to know about this thing. What is that? It is a knowledge to the world. It is a window to know a world when you are still in your place. It is an open window to the, all the knowledge you want. It is just by one click. You can take it by one click. I was amazed. 
And I was surprised at the same time. How can that be? She said, you should see it to know it. I thought I want it. I want it in between my hands because I was passionate to everything about knowledge and about education. So what did I do? I asked her, how much this uh, instrument will be sold? She said, no, about 400 reals and go. Okay, my husband is poor and I do not have money and I do not have income. So I thought well, the thing, only thing that I have was jewelry. So I took off my bracelet, my necklaces, gave it to her and told her, please take it to Muscat, sell it to Muscat without my husband knowing <laughs> and bring me that BC. So the next week, the BC was between my hands. And I ordered my husband, well, for one thing, just open a DSL line, telephone line, so I can put on it. And my husband was not a very well educated person. He's an army man, and he's finished his elementary school. But he was willing on something. He wanted to please me. Anyway, how? So he accepted to open the telephone line. He didn't know the problems between that of <laughs> But it opens the world to me. I opened the telephone line, I DSL point, I opened the internet from 6 a.m. after my go boys go to school until I finish it until 12 p.m., go to prepare lunch, come from 3 p.m. until 9 p.m., I make dinner, I make my children go to sleep, I continue playing with that internet. I explore the world. I explored the world with that. I knew the most powerful thing, knowledge, and knowledge about everything. How can you know the world? How can you know the, what people are thinking of? Where are the world is going to? What is developing in, outside of your country? What are the other people thinking? How they are look like? I haven't seen a foreigner before. But I have seen all types of people on a picture. I can press on a map, I can see USA culture. I press a map, I can see France, French persons, Asian, European, all types of nationalities, all types of education, all types of knowledge. It was between my hands. And it's very powerful knowledge for me. That powerful knowledge makes me decide I want to be one of the best women in my society. I want to be different than other women have. I refuse to be an ordinary woman. I want to make a change in my life. I want to make a change on other people's life, first family, then the other community. So what should I do? Thank you. That thought became to me when I was 35 years old. After 16 years of marriage, and my husband felt safety, felt comfortable with his wife. She is an obeying wife. She is a good wife, a good mother. And the boys are growing up very safely and very healthily. So on a romantic night, I give it to him on a very flourish words. I want to make something for my future. On the same time, I want to present income to the house. So you should combine these together. Because my people or men do not agree with your mindset. You know, they agree when it comes to financial. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I started putting my work to action. I learned how to run a business. I studied how to run a business. By how? By internet. I learned the feasibility study. I learned how to do a feasibility study, how to pay, how to take money, how to financially manage my work, how to human resource my business. Every aspect on these steps I have read, written about, and teach myself one step away, one step away. My feasibility study was done by me and given to the government, and after that I took in a fund the first fund was 5,000 money real, second fund was 20,000 money real, and I given them back after three years. That was achieving of my gold in my business. When I saw the change in my life, I refused to go alone on the trip. I refused to be alone. I want to take the hands of other sisters with me. 
I saw the society with me, uh, around me, and I didn't see any other girls coming out or running or these, their businesses. They are sitting on the house, you know, selling uh, clothes, selling watches, selling, but it's not a future job. They said you should make something for your future. You do not need money. It's not about money. At the, oh, at the end, it is not about how money you bring to the family. How powerful woman you be in your family. What is the type model of woman or mother you should be in your family? So for that, I decided to make a difference in my life at first, then to other people's life on the second. First thing I decided to change. I was a covered mother from top to down. Because in my community, so especially, we are refused to go like faced. Our face is out because everybody will be a policeman to take phone and tell your brothers and sisters and father that your girls go come out in the houses. Or govern, I saw her in this institution today. I saw her driving a car. Said, What's happening? I'm not a speeding car. I'm just a woman doing our, our procedures for my business. But my community refuses this. So at first, I adapted with them. But later on, I see that it will not benefit me and it will not benefit my community to be one ordinary woman like other women in my community. So I make a change, two changes at one time. When I decided to take this cover up, I was looking to that image. Wow. <laughs> uh, my trip, my first trip out of Oman was to China. I go with the Oman Chamber people, 20 person, to discover Guangzhou uh, exhibition on May 20, uh, 2016. 2016. So the first time I saw my picture was out of Oman. And this was picture came in on the social media. <laughs> Did you, can you imagine that? I was, I was you know, willing to make a change, but I really need to make a change. <laughs> so the first decision was to make a change in my health and my wealth. So after the five months of uh, this image, uh, I was 97 kilograms, about 190. 290, uh, 220 pounds, pounds yes, to become 72 kilograms person. So I, ch uh, I lose up 22 kilograms. The second decision was how to touch or influence the community. When you want to influence the community, the most powerful thing, do not speak to the man, do not speak to the woman. Go inside and take the children and make companion with them. That will teach mother and father. So in my village, there was no kindergarten. So I decided first thing to do is educate the younger boy and the younger girls in my village and make them know that the education is a very needed thing in your future. So I powered my village with a small kindergarten, voluntarily done all by me and my friends here. And for the fifth year, this is the batch five, batch five from this kindergarten years. We are graduated 45 children until now. And this is inshallah will be the fifth with 15 younger days. <laughs> this kindergarten is managed and run by two volunteer girls from my village. So these voluntary girls learned that voluntarily work is something essential in their life to make a change on their children and their you know, parents and family children. And that was of changing in the mindset of people in the village because they were thinking just to get money to the house, not to do anything further. And it was the first life changing in my village. The second the thing that I have done to make difference in my community is speak out loud in Sur. I bring exhibition, I made uh, conferences in my city. 
I went to Oman Chamber. I went to communities. I went to the you know special sector. I told them I want to make exhibition. I want to make difference for women. Please give me the tools to do it. And I managed to run uh, and multiple. Uh, conferences about empowering men, women and teach them, them how to be entrepreneurs. On the same time, I went to the city council and I told them, you do not think about how to build the country. You need to think how to build individuals. We need to empower women here. We need to take that shame thinking in Oman, women in our city. We need to make a change in their life. It is a struggle. Until now, it is a big struggle. They refused. But I will keep fighting, fighting, until I will reach my point. <laughs> the third thing was also taking my group of girls who believe in me, a group of very powerful girls, but they do not have the tools to go out of their comfort zone. I took them, took them with me to exhibitions, to workshops, to give them workshop how to be uh, models in their society. And we managed to operate uh, maybe 16 to 18 work business uh, women in Sur, uh, thankful, and uh, 14 of them have taken fund from a raft uh, program. On 2018, the last and the key word of my life will continue the achievement. I was nominated one of the six micro companies that are the best six micro companies in all over Oman for the award of entrepreneurship in all over Oman. Thank you. At the end, we have been run all over success formula, and I have told you before, we should remember and memorize it and speak loud with each other. This, you know, repeating will be good. So first, what is the first word? Passion. Passion. The second word? Self-motivation. Self Third word? Knowledge. Um, education. education. First word? Knowledge. Knowledge. Fifth word? Action. Action. Sixth word and the last word? Achievement. Achievement. Thank you very much. And I'll keep you with this says of Michelle Obama. She said, success isn't about how much money you make. It is about the difference you make in people's life. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. For the second time, I appreciate it. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Thank you.